this is uh, going multi-node, um, so let's get started. So I am Eric Ostrich. I work for SmartLogic uh, out in Baltimore. Uh, so I, this is my, my GitHub is Ostrich, and Twitter is Eric Ostrich. Um, so what are we going to go over? So first we'll find out what a MUD is. The, the thing I'll be showing off is, is one of them. Uh, then we'll go over clustering, leader selection, spanning calls across the cluster, and then some problems I encountered uh, when I went multi-node. Um, so this is the project that we'll be seeing. Uh, you can go to xventure.org. Um, it's a uh, open source uh, framework that you can download and, and uh, spin up your own version. Uh, we're gonna be seeing something called Gossip. So this is a uh, cross-game cross chat, uh, chat network. Um, so everyone can have their own game and then talk across all of them. Uh, and then this is uh, my instance of uh, XVenture, so this is the, the flagship uh, XVenture instance called MidMud. So you can go to midmud.com and sign in right now and, and kind of follow along with yourself. Um, so yeah, so what is a MUD? Um, so MUD expands out to multi-user dungeon. Uh, it's a text-based multiplayer game. Started in the late 70s, uh, and you can think it's Think of it as world, world, world of Warcraft or EverQuest, but no graphics. Um, so the graphics are in your imagination. Um, so let's first take a, take a look at what a MUD is. Um, so this is a client called MUDlet. Uh, you connect to most MUDs with Telnet. So this is just a, a raw TCP socket with some extras. Uh, so then we can go ahead and sign in. Um, uh, Xventure does not want your password over, over Telnet, which is plain text, so we have that nice little login. Um, so here we can see uh, this is the game. So we can see we're in the town square. Uh, it's got a nice little description that kind of tells you where you're at. Uh, and then we can see there's a town crier here trying to catch our attention. He said hello to us. Uh, we can say hi, hello back to him. Um, so you, it's, it, you enter commands by a little text prompt at the bottom that doesn't appear to be showing very well. Um, so you, you type in uh, your command. So this is the say command. I can use the global command to say hello to everyone in the world. This is uh, spans across uh, anyone connected. Um, if you want to talk to gossip, uh, I'm not plugged in because I'm offline, but you'd type gossip and then hello everyone there, and then that would get spun out to every game that's connected. Um, so we can also go ahead and emote. So you can say, uh, so waves to the crowd. Uh, so then that just puts your name and does like a little action that everyone in the room will see. Um, and we can also do uh, built-in socials is, is typically what they're called. Uh, and so we can go ahead and move south, so we can see in the exits row, south, so we can keep going south. Uh, there is a goblin down here, so we'll go ahead and try and find him. And he's hiding pretty good, apparently. Uh, there he is, okay. So now the goblin targets me and he's starting to fight back. So this is just like your typical uh, uh, I guess, uh, MMO experience. Um, so he's, unfortunately, I'm healing about as fast as he's damaging me because he's that much lower than me. Uh, so you, you can go ahead and uh, use magic missile. So I'll zap him. Uh, and then he swings back. My magic missile is, is ready again. And then there, I've killed him. Uh, so then I get one experience point. He drops some gold. So I can see that in the world. I can get the gold. Now I have the gold. Uh, and then we can... Go ahead and go north again, back to town. So the movement commands you are shortened. So we, uh, this is a general store. You can see there's a little shop here. So we can see what's available. Uh, so let's go ahead and buy an elixir. Uh, so then it's in my inventory. Um, so yeah, OK. Uh, and. Uh, the other part of uh, XVenture is this admin panel. Uh, so everything is editable via this, so you don't do any commands inside the game. 
like, uh, pre uh, like other uh, MUDs do. Uh, so you can go ahead and see the whole world. So this is the area we're in. Uh, right now we're in Lucy's. So I can go ahead and, uh, so I can do some new text. Uh, and then this will instantly update inside the game. So there it is. Uh, these are some extra things that get tacked on at the end. Um, yeah, uh, there is one thing that you should uh, try and find. There's a uh, bar here uh, that you may recognize some people. Uh, so there's Aaron and Jose are in here. And every now and then, uh, Aaron says uh, some nice puns. <laughs> uh, OK. Uh, so yeah, so some MUDs that you may have played previous in the in in like the late 90s. Uh, I think Discworld is still running, but so Discworld is a the Terry Pratchett uh, novel series uh, that's based in that. And then there was one called Major MUD um, that was very popular. Uh, okay, so let's go over uh, the supervision of X Venture. So this this so this will kind of help get us into the like what. Some things are. So this is the top level. We have X Venture. We have a cluster supervisor, some RAF thing, uh, uh, Ecto, Phoenix, the game, and then Ranch is, a, is that Telnet listener. Uh, so if we zoom into the game, we have a session registry, which is uh, similar to the Elixir registry, but more custom for what this, what's going on. Uh, a config, some caches. So the item, so the, the Elixir item is hanging out in this local cache. Uh, there's a session supervisor and then the world. Uh, so if we zoom into the world, there's a game world master, a game zone controller, and then some game zone supervisors. The zone is, uh, uh, so if, if you think of um, like a, a, a collection of, of places you might go, so in, in uh, mid mud, uh, this is the zone, so you can see the full map of everything, and each rec to each uh, brackets are a room. Uh, so those are all grouped together. All the rooms are hanging out in the room supervisor. All the NPCs are hanging out underneath the, the NPC supervisor. Um, so yeah, so that's our supervision tree. Um, so the starting point before we, before I started going multi-node, uh, everything was set up to be one single server. Uh, there's a lot of game state, so the whole world is hanging out uh, inside of it processes. So everything is uh, geared towards a single node. Everything is registered via the local registry, which doesn't span across the cluster. Um, all the data that's cached is in ETS tables, uh, and then lots of uh, the virtual world. So I had I thought of two paths forward. You could go with an umbrella app, and you could have like the Telnet connector sitting on one node, you can have the game world on another, and then maybe the third, you have uh, Phoenix as like the web view in to the cluster. Or uh, you could do a single application so that each node has the exact same application, and then they know how to talk to each other that way. Um, I have had previously bad experiences with an umbrella app, so I decided to go with a single application that is cluster aware. Um, so yeah, how do we do that? So, you start with clustering. Uh, this uses libcluster, which is pretty amazing. Uh, it's at bitwalker slash libcluster. Um, this was pulled out of Swarm and now is its own uh, package. Um, so it's really easy to set up. This is the EPMD strategy. Uh, so you just tell it where your hosts are at. So this is uh, world one at host and world two at host. Um, and it uses the EPMD daemon to go ahead and just connect them. Um, so you use uh, IEX and you give it a short name that matches one of those hosts. And then, so we have uh, IEX S name world one, dash mix, and then for the same for world two. And then, uh, oops, uh, you, this is just showing the two nodes. Uh, so they, they start up and you can see here very softly, uh, it says it's connected to world one. Uh, we'll see that again later. Um, so libcluster is really easy to get started. It, just kind of works um, for you. Uh, and it has a, a bunch of other strategies. You can use uh, DNS to find others. There's a Kubernetes 
uh, metadata lookup, uh, Kubernetes DNS lookup. Um, and so there's a, there's a lot of ways to, to try and connect with libcluster. Um, so the next problem I, I faced was picking a leader. Um, at this point, I had two nodes that ran the full world each, each together, uh, and they were effectively separate but still connected via Erlang distribution. Um, so next we had to pick a leader. Uh, so I used the Raft protocol. Uh, you can see this at raft.github.io. Um, and so we'll just watch. So this is what Raft is doing, and then we'll step through it. Uh, so these are five nodes. Each has a timeout, and they'll try. One of them is going to uh, vote for itself as the leader, and then the rest will converge on it. Um, so you can see this. This one's probably going to win because its little timeout is is the, the shortest. Um, so once it wins, it'll go ahead and send out a packet to the rest of the cluster. Goes out. Then they both vote for it, and now it's the leader. Uh, these orange um, messages that it are sending out that it's sending out is just an assertion that hey, I'm the leader. Um, so you can go ahead and uh, stop this. So now uh, there is no leader. The other nodes still have a timeout that is going to like re-trigger leader election. And then so if both those tried at the same time, but three won. Um, so now we have a new leader. You can bring this one back, uh, and then it'll just catch up. Um, so that's that's Raft in a nutshell. Um, so this is just the, the, the same thing. So here's it sending out, uh, catching up, um, and whatnot. So yeah, so each, each leader waits a, a random amount of time. I have it as, uh, for XVenture, it's 300 milliseconds plus a random 300 milliseconds. Um, so whichever node gets the shortest timeout is most likely to win. Um, the first vote for me it sees uh, the, uh, uh, the other nodes that sees a vote for me, it'll just vote for that node. It'll save that it's, it's voted. So if any others come in, it'll just drop on the floor. Um, and then once a majority of the cluster has picked a leader, uh, then it goes ahead and uh, wins the term and then carries on. Um, one other thing that's very important is that uh, if two nodes end up um, Picking at this roughly the same time, and due to network lag and whatnot, they both win, uh, or they both get enough votes um, that it, you could end up with a frozen uh, election that you'll eventually time out that term and then just start a whole new one to try and the whole process again. Um, so once you have a leader, uh, what do they do? Uh, so the leader uh, takes all of the zones in the game, um, so we can for. So these seven nodes, these these seven zones, will be spanned across the whole cluster. Um, so it it uh, just takes each node and goes zone one here, zone two here, zone three, and then just keeps going until it runs out. Um, and then when a node falls off the cluster for uh, the the process crash, the the whole node crashed, or someone snipped a network wire between the two. Uh, Erlang will notice that the process, that the node is gone, and then tell the leader that this happened. It sees what zones are no longer in the cluster that it can reach, uh, and then goes ahead and goes ahead and rebalances them across the cluster, uh, which we'll get to see later. Um, and I ended up pulling this out. So this is a new hex package called, well, it's, it's a new package called uh, Squabble, um, since the leader doesn't matter, so they just uh, it just, we just need one of them, so they'll go ahead and squabble over that. Uh, so this is not on Hex yet. Uh, there are no tests, but it has been tested uh, on my production. So <laughs> uh, uh, if anyone wants to, to try and, and poke at this and break it, maybe we can make it better. Um, so here's what you do to be a squabble. So it's a behavior. Uh, so you just say, I'm a squabble. This is a squabble leader, and then you have two callbacks at the moment. Um, so when a leader is elected, you'll get the term. And right now, I only use it to just log that a new, a new term has happened and I won. Um, and then you'll get a callback when the node is down. Um, Xventure, all it does is it's the same for either one. It just tries to rebalance. Um, but it seemed important to have two, two different uh, callbacks. Um, and then the last thing is, why do you need a majority of the cluster uh, is because you need to make sure to have a, a quorum at all times. So if, 
if a, a net split happens where two of the of five nodes peel off, uh, then they can't vote enough with each other to then start the world up inside themselves. So they'll just be stuck and just will just like be there until they rejoin. Um, and then they'll uh, be able to rejoin the whole cluster and, and all will continue on. Uh, the next step was removing the local registry. Um, so I was able to get away with just global. Um, I don't end up spinning up a lot of processes, which is the, the one downside to global. If you spin up like thousands or more per second processes, global may not be able to keep up with that. Um, but XVenture just at boot spins up everything that it needs that will be glo globally registered uh, and is good to go from there. So it's the, the easiest way uh, to go. And for that, it's the same thing as, as the VIA re registry, except you just replace the first two with global and then it's globally registered. Um, so the next thing is once we have uh, three nodes, the world is spanning all of them, but they all have independent caches. So if you're in the web admin panel and you do an update to an item and it happens to go to node two, uh, without spanning that across the cluster, only the item on node two will actually be updated inside the game state. Um, so to get around this, uh, I use process groups. So each uh, item cache on each node goes ahead and registers itself with a, a process group. Um, and then you can, we'll, we'll see how to do that next slide. But uh, if anyone knows a better way to do this, please let me know. Um, so here's, here's us, uh, it's PG2. Uh, we create a new table, sorry, a new process group. This will uh, only happen once, but uh, you, you, you always have to create it because you don't know which one will be first. Um, and then you go ahead and join that process group with your, with your self PID, uh, and then you're part of the group. Um, so in order to use this, uh, it ha I have a def insert item. So you get the members out of it, and then you just go ahead and map across it and call each PID. Uh, this member is a PID, and so I just call with insert item. Uh, yeah, uh, and then that will go ahead and uh, the uh, gen server that's listening matches this and then does a local uh, cache X update. Um, and then all of them get it at once. Um, okay, so, um, so some problems encountered. Um, when you start having uh, networked nodes, uh, some calls may time out. So uh, your process, your session, your player session, so when you sign in, you get a session, may be talking, you're on node one, and uh, the room that you're in is on node two and you do a look, that's a call across the network, that may now start timing out because you have to go across the network and once you're going across the network, anything can happen, right? So you just have to be aware that calls and, and uh, casts and whatnot may start timing out, or I guess just calls what may start timing out um, and to be aware of that. Uh, along with that, you sh uh, I had ended up adding a circuit breaker. Um, so when that starts failing really quick, uh, your session restarts and tries to look at the room you're in, which then falls over and then tries to do it again and just keeps cycling really, really, really quick. Um, so I ended up adding a session, uh, sorry, a circuit breaker for this. So these, when you sign, uh, this is a contrived example, but uh, when you sign in and the world thinks it's up, but it actually isn't, uh, goes ahead and it immediately fails, like 10 or 100 milliseconds later, tries again. Uh, and then it just kind of slowly backs off and keeps trying and keeps trying until it eventually just says, sorry, the game's offline, uh, you gotta go away. Uh, come back later. Um, and then I, there's also things that should happen at most once. Uh, so each node is connected to gossip, the, the cross-platform or uh, chat network. Um, and uh, each node should be able to send out messages through that WebSocket to the server. Uh, but when a new message comes in, you only want one of them to post to the local channel network, because uh, otherwise, if all three of them do it, you'll just see three messages. That's all the same, and that's not good. Uh, so then, in these cases, uh, the leader node is the only one that should handle this. So you can look up with Squabble and say, am I the leader? If I am, then go ahead and do this. Um, so yeah, and this is, uh, 
Um, some nice uh, performance tweaks that I think helps with being multi-node. Uh, so this was uh, a few weekends ago, XVenture only handled 230 players uh, before trying this out and uh, ended up with 3,500. Um, so to start with, uh, it was a single process that was being overloaded. Uh, the room network, sorry, the room process uh, ends up being used for a bunch of stuff. It's kind of like a, a router for everyone in the room. Uh, so when you, when, you do, when you enter, a message gets sent to everyone else in the room that you entered and then uh, returns. Um, so that notification process to everyone else in the room was what was uh, constricting the amount of uh, players that could join at one time. Um, so just making a side process uh, that the room sees you enter and then just pushes it directly to that one and then that one spins out the notification ended up getting me from 230 to just 600. So just that one simple little tweak. Uh, you can see that in PR72. Um, the next one was uh, the single process was being overloaded by data size. So this was a session registry um, that I was sticking uh, the user struct. So this was a like gigantic record. Uh, it had your class, it had your race, it had all the skills that you might have like preloaded into it, so it was, it was ginormous. Uh, and then you gave it to the session registry and it just hang, it held on to it. Um, and eventually, um, uh, this just, uh, it got so big that when any time a new message, a new player signed in, it took longer than five seconds to uh, uh, load. <laughs> uh, and then a new person entered and then it just got, it just compounded and it got worse. Um, so what I ended up doing was massively simplifying what gets stored in there. Um, so it's then it's just a, the, your ID, you are a user, your name, and then like a small map of extra data. Uh, so it's incredibly simpler. That doubled. Now we're at 1,200 players. Uh, that's that's being connected. And then the final one, to, which is uh, the biggest surprise, um, I actually at 1,200 players, I actually ran out of RAM at uh, 50 gigabytes. Um, and that's real RAM. Um, so uh, it was very, like, I remember telling people as I was going through this, like, I, I, I don't think I'll run out of RAM or whatever, and then uh, I ended up actually doing that. Um, so I fixed the registry, but everywhere else that the user was being passed around um, was still that full user struct. Uh, so the simple fix for that was any time in the, the room um, client API for the gen server, I just, uh, you pass in a user and then immediately simplify it and then pass it forward. Uh, so that got me from uh, 1,200 to the 3,500 uh, connected bots. Uh, and uh, the amount of RAM usage, the 3,500 bots I think was at like four gigabytes. <laughs> so just like that, just those tweaks was uh, 10 times less. Um, and you can see that one in uh, PR74. Um, and this is the final uh, Grafana uh, uh, gauge that I had for connected players. Um, so it was really, really cool to go from uh, 230 to then go 15 times more uh, and be able to be like a, a true MMO uh, of amount of players connected. Um, and then this is the server that it was running on. So it was a core i7 from like three years ago and 64 gigs of RAM. Um, so that's, that's why it was so surprising. <laughs> um, cool, so now let's uh, uh, try the demo. Um, so this is the, oh, this was wrong, uh, okay. So let's try this again. Um, so this will be three nodes are set up. So we have our world one at the top which is gonna be on port 4000, and world two, which will be on 4001, and then world three, which is on 4002. Um, so let's go ahead and start them. Uh, so we'll see that it'll be real quick, uh, but one of them will be voted a leader, the top one, world one is the leader, and then it's spinning the, worlds, the rooms across the cluster, uh, and now we're good to go. So this is load balance with traffic, uh, so we can see here 4,000, 4,001, 4,002, uh, and then we can go to our browser because this is also a uh, uh, 
there's a web client, so we can go ahead and click play now. Um, so here's our uh, that. So we can see debug info. So we are on world one is what we got load balance to, and it is also the leader. Uh, we can see world three knows of the other of that its leader is world one, etc. Um, so now we will go ahead and uh, let's see which. Okay, so we'll just kill this bottom node. Oops, and of course I still had a. Uh, Synchronized panes on, so let's turn that off and let that start again. Um, so looks like world one won again. Oh, no, actually world two won, okay. Um, so let's go ahead and reconnect. So we're on world three this time, so let's go ahead and uh, we'll kill the top node. Uh, so what we saw there, the leader noticed the node died and then respun up the, the zone that was on it. Um, the user didn't notice, a, oh, this, okay, so yeah, so we were in that zone, uh, and the, the zone died. The, pr the player process is linked to uh, that room, so then it got restarted, uh, and this is all a player sees when the, uh, an entire node just dropped off the cluster. Uh, so we can go ahead and add that back. Um, and then let's... Uh, let's see, so we're on node three. No, world two is the leader, so let's go ahead and kill the leader. Uh, so this is then the, the other two nodes uh, re-voted for each other because they noticed the leader fell off. Um, so world three was picked as the leader, and then zone one, two, and six were on that zone, uh, uh, were on node two. Uh, so they got spun up on uh, zone one, or sorry, node one, uh, because uh, the bottom node was probably already overloaded because uh, the top one died. Uh, we can go ahead and rejoin. And all is well again. So there we go. Uh, yeah, so here's, here's uh, Squabble. Um, it's pretty simple. So this uses the raft, uh, just the leader selection from la raft. There's a lot more to it, uh, but this this particularly doesn't need it. Um, so when you start it up, you tell which subscriptions to look at, uh, and then whenever anything happens, it goes ahead and uh, announces, uh, or sorry, it calls that down here somewhere. Uh, yeah, okay. All right, uh, and then finally, um, XVenture has a Discord um, that you can go ahead and join. This, you don't, don't try and copy this link. This is on the, the readme for the, the, uh, the repository. You can go ahead and click that. There's a, there's a few uh, players that are, people that are trying to learn Elixir through XVenture. Um, so it'd be cool if, if uh, people joined up with that. Um, here's our image credits. And then, uh, yeah, so there's uh, the repo, the, the documentation website, uh, and then finally, if I have a few stickers available, so I have uh, Xventure, a Gossip sticker, uh, and then also this is uh, my cat Odo, uh, so that's also available. Uh, really good talk. Uh, can you remind me, what was the necessity for a squabble for a leader election versus the other libraries? Um, so uh, squabble is in particular uh, two, two reasons. I wanted to do it. Um, and then second, uh, so there's an existing RAF library, um, but I wanted it to be, uh, we can actually take a, a, I'll explain myself better in this. Uh, so it's, a, it's just a simple leader election. So each node uh, has a single process that all communicate with each other. Um, and then that makes, makes sure that one process, so like whenever a leader is elected or anything with the cluster state changes, one thing happens in the cluster. Uh, so you get a single callback instead of uh, multiple. So the, the Raft library 
is doing something slightly different uh, than this. Uh, two quick questions. How do you handle NPC AI, like behaviors, and did you happen to catch the talk right before this in this room on behavior trees? Because uh, that sounded like the perfect kind of fit for this. Yeah, so I, I, I didn't uh, catch it, but I will watch it later. Uh, so how this is handled is we can look at the, uh, let's look at the goblin. Um, so uh, it's just through an events system. Uh, so there's a, uh, each event has a type that triggers when a certain thing happens. Um, and so here's when you enter the room, he'll go ahead and target you, uh, which then starts a combat tick set. Uh, so then it, it comes in here, it says, uh, so you can have multiple combat ticks, and then they'll use the weight to try and pick a random one uh, for each tick, and then it'll send a text, and then it sends a, a uh, I have it as effects, uh, so it'll send an effects at you, uh, and you'll deal with that, and then it gets delayed. Um, so then it'll, it'll process send after two seconds, another combat tick, and just keep going until it dies, or you, you move away, uh, and then, Finally, there's a, uh, just a normal tick, so it'll just go ahead and move around uh, in a random direction. Um, and I think there's a few others. So there's an emote uh, here. Uh, so yeah, so it's all through this events uh, system. So yeah, great talk. Uh, I was curious, uh, when the node died, I, I saw that it uh, redistributed the rooms that were on there, but when it rejoined, it didn't get any rooms? Yeah. It, you want to comment a little bit on that? Sure, so uh, you definitely could. Um, I am of a, uh, I can't decide if, if I want to do that, because then you're like purposely tanking the user experience. <laughs> um, but at the same time, something like really awful is happening, that a node died and came back. Um, so just like ripping that bandit off and like redistributing it so that it's spanned out again. Uh, that would be pretty easy to do. It's just, I just haven't. Yep. Okay, so in your game logic, you had three different um, servers or nodes. Um, if the user is connected to one server and then that server has a network partition to the other two servers, what happens to the user session? Like, is that recovered in some way? Um, so that I'm not entirely sure. I've only dealt with nodes just completely dying, um, which actually has happened, which was pretty cool. Linode had, I'm on Linode, uh, and I don't know, a week ago or so, they had a network issue with a single node, uh, and so it just like dropped off the cluster. I got a bunch of errors in, in Sentry. <laughs> it came back on, and when I like looked a few, like because it was overnight, when I looked in the morning, all was well. Um, so that was really cool to do. Um, but as far as uh, leaving, but still being alive, and then joining back in, I'm not entirely sure what would happen. Okay, thank you. I just had a question on um, when you're dealing with those different performance issues, um, if there were any particular techniques or, um, I don't know, how you went about uh, finding what was the problem as you were encountering those things. Um, so I, uh, all of XVenture is set up with, or most of XVenture is set up with metrics. Um, and, and so uh, I had a nice Grafana panel that I could watch and see kind of what was slow, but then also, it was literally just the, the process that fell over and had a whole bunch of red in my logs, um, as well as so I went, okay, what's wrong with that? And then found out that way, so. Yep, so it was a, a combination of the two. So you had some problems with uh, those user data structs were too large to pass around yep. or to store? Where, you said you simplified them, but where did you keep the data then? 
Uh, so it's still, uh, so we can, we can, let's go to the right project first. Uh, so this is the, the simplified version. So we can see that the, the user is, is just this, this wide now instead of as wide as it was before. Um, so specifically the issue was sending a huge message to like 30 or 40 processes and then it just fills up their inbox. Um, and so that, that inbox was, was the thing that was uh, bloating RAM so much. Um, so it's just the session process still has the full user struct expanded and can deal on that. But anytime it leaves the process, it gets a lot smaller. Um, and so that, that's not only a benefit to not fill up your message inbox with huge uh, messages, but it's also nice if you're sending it to a remote node, you have to push it that much, across, l that much less across the cluster. So. I had a quick question about gossip. Is that something that you are writing on top of that is existing, or is that something that you built for specifically for this? Uh, yeah, so it is uh, sp it's specifically, I'm part of, there's a mud coder Slack uh, that has a whole bunch of people in all kinds of languages uh, writing their own MUDs. Um, so this is, I guess, a service for the, the wider community. So it's, it's built into XVenture, um, but anyone can join, so here's, Here's the docs for that. So it's just a, a WebSocket protocol, or on, it's a protocol on top of WebSockets. Um, so you go ahead and connect. Uh, you send an authentication um, and whatnot. So anyone can join this. Uh, can be a, you can be C Sharp. Uh, I think there's a C Sharp. There's a JavaScript library. There's an Elixir library. Uh, someone's making it for C. Um, so kind of anyone can join, uh, and it's it's yeah for the the wider community. Uh, this is also open source uh, on my on my GitHub, um, and this is, these are the games that are currently connected. So if you're on MidMud, you might see someone talk to you that has an at symbol and then a name. Uh, so that's someone else on a, on their own game uh, that's talking. So. Uh, you mentioned the word bots when you were doing your load testing. Can you talk a little bit about how you were simulating that player traffic? Uh, sure. So this is uh, also open source. Uh, it's, a, it's called VentureBot. Um, so it's just a small little library that does a TCP connection. Um, so it starts up, connects uh, to, the, to the server, and then just gets gen TCP messages as the server gets sent and strips out some, uh, Telnet has something called IEC and some extra data, so it just strips all that out. Uh, so it just gets text, and then it, it just looks for, uh, tries to make a character, so if you're inactive, it sees a login, calls create, uh, picks a name, picks a race, picks a class, skips the email, makes a password, and then starts playing. <laughs> um, and then after that, just kind of looks for exits and then moves around. Um, so that's, my laptop had all of those bots and then across the Wi-Fi it was connected to my desktop and so I just spun up 100 at a time. So every second a new one would join and then it would just keep going um, <coughs> and then you just watch the, the bots uh, sign in. So that they're, they're bots but they're acting as a full player. So that's, that's how we could uh, get good metrics. Hey, uh, great talk. Um, how how are you deploying? Like, like, how do you deploy an update to like the the server, for example? Do you like do a rolling update, or is there uh, any like strategies for that? Yeah, so it's uh, the most simple method at the current moment. Um, so I have a release script that uh, just deletes all the static, brunch builds, digest, release, uh, and then. Um, I have an SCP script, so it just sends that tarball to the server, to all three of them, uh, makes a century re release with the version, and then I have a, I just have a, a TMX pane set up that looks very similar to this. They're all synchronized. You just do uh, Control R, start, stop, uh, so stop, unzip, start, 
Uh, so it's, it's super simple at the moment, but it uh, does its job. Okay, and I think that's it. Thank you.